Water. Water is a wonderful thing in its place. Uh, we have a lot of good water, uh, especially on the western side of the Cascade Range in Oregon. Uh, this particular picture here is Willamette Falls, Oregon City. Water, however, is the uh, nemesis of, uh, of a highway. Uh, water and heavy traffic uh, loadings, uh, trucks, uh, chains and studs uh, probably do the majority of the damage to our highways. Uh, it's commonly thought that uh, the base of a highway, which is made of generally rock, uh, doesn't wear out. It uh, lasts forever. That isn't true. Uh, rock actually wears like most other materials, a uh, little slower rate than some, but um, it does wear out and time turns to a clay-like material. It isn't uncommon to dig up an old road surface and say, well, they didn't put any base under this road. That's why the surface is gone. Uh, that isn't so. They actually did put base in there, but it, uh, it's worn out. It's degraded. Water uh, works on uh, uh, rock uh, through freeze-thaw cycles and through, through loadings and uh, through the uh, uh, on the surface of a highway, uh, water and uh, heavy traffic uh, create a situation that's much like a high-pressure washer. That, uh, if any of you have worked with a high-pressure washer, you know that you can adjust the setting and, and actually cut uh, your pavement or your driveway if you're washing that down. Uh, that's what happens under traffic. Uh, these are some typical flaws that you see in highways. Uh, plating out of a top lift of patching, uh, alligator cracking, uh, longitudinal cracks. Uh, anytime you see uh, a longitudinal crack in a wheel rut or you see alligator type cracking, uh, that's an indication of a base failure. and. Uh, you shouldn't misconstrue that. Uh, I don't think you, now here's a typical alligator cracking. Um, you can't correct that by putting a thin lift over the top of it or doing some kind of a thin surface treatment. You're just kidding yourself. You, all you're doing is maybe getting a year out of it and you're gonna be right back looking at the same flaw. You need to uh, actually get in there and, and uh, treat the problem, and that means getting down to the base and dealing with uh, upgrading that base material, or you need to remove that pavement down deep enough and then go to something like a geotextile paving fabric, uh, something that'll actually give you some additional structure to the road. Now here we're looking at a, a typical overlay of uh, Portland cement concrete pavement. Uh, the old pavement is acting as a base in this case, and that pavement over the two, most of the two travel lanes is, uh, is very good structurally. It's the area outside of the pavement uh, where the base has uh, tended to fail along that edge, and you've, you've created a crack there. Uh, pavement does that over time. It age hardens, and uh, gets brittle and then loadings will crack it and then these cracks will allow water to get into those areas and then we get into this situation we were talking about earlier of this this hydraulic ram like uh, high pressure washer type uh, forces that erode and, and uh, do great damage to your base. Now uh, here we're dealing with that edge along that old Portland cement concrete pavement uh, with what we call a, an inlay patch. And this consists of, of grinding uh, that old pavement out of there uh, with a cold planer, this is a little 14 and a half inch cold planer, a rego, with the, uh, a conveyor system on it. <clears throat> They're conveying that material into the truck and the truck then we'll haul that material off, stockpile it for future use. 
you don't throw this material away it's of high value you can add new admixtures with it uh, emulsified asphalt make an excellent base out of it uh, a very low volume road you could pave uh, a top surface with this material um, the main thing is that it's a it's a an important resource that you don't throw in a hole someplace now here you see where they've they've drowned out and they're making their next pass up tight against the concrete uh, pavement they're grinding down about four inches in this case after they grind the material out and most of it's conveyed in you can see there's quite a few crumbs in this case uh, there's room in this train I believe for some type of a vacuum machine to clean the majority of that material up a small amount I think the fellows have found that uh, it really doesn't matter if you broadcast that out it's AC and and it's compatible with your tack and your pavement you're going to put back and it really doesn't hurt anything to leave a small amount of crumbs in there uh, one of the nice things about uh, using the little coal planer there to remove this AC is uh, not only the speed with which it, uh, you remove it but it leaves a good roughened vertical edge for adhesion of the your new asphalt pavement and it also leaves a good rough and uh, bottom of the cut there for uh, preventing uh, pushing and shoving. I wish that all utility companies would use uh, one of these small planers for their uh, surface cuts on the streets. I think we'd have a lot less problems. Uh, most of them use a diamond saw and uh, my experience has been that a diamond saw it requires a lot of water and so you create a kind of a, a latent or a uh, uh, what's the uh, term a slurry like material that coats that vertical edge of the saw cut and you can never get a good bond with your AC then that you can tack it and you put your new AC against it but there's always that film separating your old with the new and over a very short period of time you'll see that edge crack come up and then water gets in there and it starts breaking that that edge of not the new pavement uh, but the uh, surrounding old pavement your patch itself your utility cut may look pretty good but it's the pavement next to it that's breaking up now here the fellows are putting out a, a geotextile paving fabric in this case it's a the brand name is Travera, and it's a polyester non-woven uh, fiber. The other types of paving fabric uh, are uh, polypropylene, uh, a little more heat sensitive than the polyesters. Uh, you have to be a little more careful with the polypropylenes that you don't overheat it and melt it. Now the uh, we use this paving fabric. Uh, we think we buy something with it. Uh, I've read that and I agree with this that it has a value of maybe a one inch of AC material so if you're creating a four inch cut and you put this fabric in and four inches of new AC you've actually put in the equivalent of five inches and uh, I think you've actually done something for the structure of the road then um, I don't think you'd find everybody in agreement with that, but that's what we feel, and experience has shown us that that's true. Now here they're uh, they're tacking that material, and and in this case, uh, uh, this particular brand requires tack just on the surface. Uh, some of them require tack on the bottom and the top. Uh, there's a uh, there's particular side to put down on this and one to leave up and uh, some of them like the Petromat uh, I believe it's the a hairy side up uh, and you you ought to check this with your vendor uh, which is appropriate application now here they they have the material all laid out and it's been tacked and we're getting ready to uh, 
repave that area. Now we're getting ready to uh, pave back <coughs> the cut area. This is a paving attachment that the extra gang fellows uh, developed. They, they originated this thing and it's really a, a slick paving apparatus. Attaches to the front of a front end loader and it varies in width from one foot to four foot wide. You can change that width on the fly from inside the cab of the loader. That's important because your cuts uh, don't always uh, maintain a uniform width. You need to vary that uh, on the fly. Now here, this is a fairly high production job. Uh, normally you wouldn't be hauling with this kind of uh, haul vehicle, but uh, in this case it's appropriate one. It's a flow boy and uh, it's about a 20 ton capacity. We got some pretty good long cuts that will accommodate this. Now you see they're metering the material out. Uh, then the, the strike off machine, the, the paver will come along behind and strike that off and it's it's important that you develop this expertise of uh, figuring out about how high to leave that material in loose form after the screed goes over <clears throat> so that when you compact it it comes down and matches the surrounding pavement. There's one other key thing that needs to be addressed in this type of work and that's where you you have heavy ruts in your pavement and where you start one of these patches <clears throat> the screed, of course, will strike it off level. Uh, when you're driving uh, in, the, in the rut, you bounce up onto this new patch, and that's undesirable, and people criticize us for that kind of condition. So what you need to do there is, uh, is rake in a transition into your patch, and then your pneumatic uh, tires on your roller will uh, compact that area. They'll get down in that rut and compact it. That's really important. I can't emphasize that enough that if you don't do that, uh, you're going to get a lot of criticism from the traveling public and from your own people. Now here, here's a, a meter that material out uh, almost to the gnat. It's, uh, and, the, and you learn this from experience and over time. Uh, you come with that kind of excellence. That now here they're pinching the edge. Uh, they found this is important to start your compaction on the outside edges of your cut. And he'll go back and roll the other side, and then he'll roll the middle. <coughs> the uh, this small roller is is so much more desirable than a large one. A large one would span the cut, and you would put very little compactive effort on your cut area. The pneumatics and the vibrating steel on this machine allows you to get right into that cut. Now, you <coughs> what you end up with is uh, is a repair area that conforms with the rest of the road. You haven't uh, distorted your cross section. Uh, the water will drain off the road like it did before. Uh, you haven't uh, created a big bump in the road. Could you imagine doing this repair with an overlay and how much mix it would take? Uh, you'd go clear to center line and go clear to your gutter. Uh, take a lot more uh, mix, I think you'd agree. And one thing that's important is at a later date, you need to come back and seal the edges of these cuts. It's kind of like a utility trench in that over time that'll open up and allow water in. So you seal it with a rubber asphalt material. We, we've been using this method to inlay patching in the Portland area for about 10 years now, and we're convinced that it's the way to fix our roads. I'd like to thank you for the opportunity of talking to you about inlay patching.